Hello, everybody, and welcome to SciWorks, uh, especially you guys that may be uh, uh, following this from the Carnival of Mathematics. I'm hosting again and really proud to do this. This is my third time. So this, if you are seeing this from the uh, Carnival of Mathematics party, welcome. <music> Anyway, I wanted to cover for this episode the culture war and math, the, the, the intersection of the cult, culture war and mathematics, especially where math came from, so to speak. I mean, you know, for, as all of us here know that mathematics didn't come from someplace. It was here. We've just stumbled upon it. And this may be geared more toward an American audience, so when I first understood that there was something really wrong with the understanding of mathematics, especially in America, was when I saw this poll. 56% of Americans did not believe that public schools should be spending any time at all teaching Arabic numbers. Arabic numbers. Like, you know, what we what numbers are in America. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The shapes are those. Uh, I mean, really, they're Hindu Arabic numbers. But yeah, it was there was this big schism, and you know that came out. And of course, there's the meme war that follows. Here's some of my favorites. Sharia law must be stopped. Under Governor Brown, students in California are now required to learn Arabic numbers. Comment 1 through 10 <laughs> how much this angers you. You know, I mean, that was... That was kind of this pitiful. And of course, then there's this. The left teaches Arabic numbers. I mean, even in the American halls of Congress, the Republican Party uses the term college graduate as a slur. So, of course, the left teaches numbers because we have that and all. The, I think a lot of most independent voters in America appreciate math and science and technology. It's just... Dude, it's just, and then of course it could be worse. You know, it could be much worse. We could be still doing Roman numerals. But thankfully we're not because the Roman numeral system was based on a culture that were all pagans. So I guess there is that. Go Jupiter! But getting back to the topic of hand, there's a lot of um, accusations that mathematics has a distinctive European history. Whereas the mathematics of the rest of the world just doesn't seem to uh, exist. A lot of people like to take credit for other things, you know, and, and I get that. It's, you know, I think, I mean, people just like to argue about mathematics. As mathematicians, that kind of comes with the, uh, with the territory. I mean, we have, you know, Newton versus uh, Leibniz, you know, over who invented calculus. You know, that's not the kind of, in terms of this, culture in mathematics, it's not what I'm really driving to. You know, we've all given credit, or most of us gives, or schools do, and most of the world gives credit, credit of the uh, Pythagorean theorem to Pythagoras, who was born around somewhere 570-ish uh, B.C. You know, but we don't... <coughs> And it's as if no one else really recognized any other contribution to mathematics except, or this theorem, except for Pythagoras. You know, and then there's some embarrassments like the Berlin Papyrus 6619, I think it is. It's a document from, from like eight. 1800 BC or 1900 BC, somewhere around there, uh, 1300 years before the birth of uh, Pythagoras, who was show, which shows 
whoever wrote it had an understanding of the idea or the process of, cal of using Pythagoras' theorem. You know, and uh, then <clears throat> there's the Moscow mathematical papyrus who shows a lot of things, that shows a lot of things uh, about, you know, ancient, ancient uh, use of math mathematical theorems, especially geometry problems, that we use today, you know, but it was a thousand or so more uh, before the birth of uh, Pythagoras and the rest of the Greek philosophers that codified what most of us in the West consider the where these theorems come from. But it is, you gotta, I mean, but the evidence is there. You know, the ideas of mathematics and geometry and frustrums and whatever has been around for a longer period of time than the people that we kind of grant them credit for, you know? And to further delineate or further separate these ideas, so here we're talking about two pieces of Egyptian papyrus, uh, the Moscow Mathematical Papyrus or the uh, Berlin Papyrus 6619, Nobody from Berlin wrote that. Nobody from Moscow wrote that. You know, it, it, these are, it's just they are called that, in my opinion, kind of appropriating the, the, scho the scholarly ideas in these papers that weren't theirs. That predates them, the people that had these, that where their names come from, from thousands of years. Almost 4,000 years in the past. And, you know, it, 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 there's nobody, like I said, the Moscow Mathematical Papyrus had nothing to do with anybody in Moscow. It was developed in Egypt, 12th Dynasty, we think. Same thing with the Berlin Papyrus. There, there, there were no Berliners, had no, anything to do with the authoring of, of that, you know? Again, somewhere in the Middle Kingdom, second half or 13th, the 12th dynasty or the 13th dynasty, is when this was developed. Yeah, I'm not even sure Berlin was around 4,000 years ago, you know? And I think it's a discredit to humanity to keep insisting that a lot of these theorems, uh, these ideas in mathematics, that the ideas should go to people, named people, when obviously, deep in the humanity's past, they were already in use. I mean, you know, I just, you know, it's like, uh, who gets first credit, right? I mean, we all battle all that every day. You know, as researchers, as scientists, we battle that every day. And um, we fight for credit. Credit's a big thing on who first authored anything. Who's first author on the paper? Who's the last author on the paper? Who, you know, who followed up? Who's in the references? Who's in the footnotes? We all take that really seriously these days. We have a lot of mathematical concepts that are incorrect, incorrectly labeled, I believe. I believe. And this is up for discussion, of course. Just because I'm saying it doesn't mean it's true. But at this point in time, I want to pimp a book that I really find fascinating. Crest of the Peacock. Crest of the Peacock. It is, is by, it's a Crest of the Peacock, Non-European Roots of Mathematics, by George Joseph. Get it on Amazon. It is almost 600 pages. It covers... Egyptian, Mesopotamian, Pat Mathematics, Chinese Mathematics, the chronology of ancient Mesopotamia in terms of mathematics, the beginnings of Egypt, Egyptian mathematics, you know, bones, strings, and stones, how you know, numbers from just generated from the human body in early, early uh, archaeo uh, human ar uh, anthropology. Just, let's just talk, I just want to read a chapter from chapter 2, Mathematics of Bone, Strings, and Standing Stones. 
It has taken an unnecessarily restrictive view of the history of mathematics to confine our study to written evidence. Mathematics, mathematics initially arose from the need to count and record numbers. As far as we know, there has never been a society without some form of counting or tallying. Matching a collection of objects with some easily handled set of markers, whether it be stones, knots, or inscriptions, such as notches on wood or bone. I mean, we humans, we've, all, we've always had mathematics at our side. And I think that is indicative of us being human, us being sentient. Because, let's face it, mathematics is the base code of the universe. How could we possibly be sentient without sensing it? without it already being built into consciousness. I mean, mathematics at its very core is just logic, you know, with Arabian numbers. <laughs> you know, and so how much of mathematics is built into all of us from the entire world? As all of us came out of the trees, walked out of the savannas of Africa and into the rest of the world, we always, we carried, you know, our, our families with us. We carried food. We carried our skills in hunting and gathering. But as far back as we can tell, we carried mathematics with us. Whether it's movements of the stars, calendars to, um, to, to uh, plant by. There's another uh, papyri called the Luhan Mathematical Papyri. There's several problems on this or formulas. One problem was uh, the, to the, uh, the, uh, the, on this one fragment, it computes the volume of a cylindrical granary. <clears throat> when I had one had the Rhind mathematical papyrus had a, had how to do cubic cubits. Uh, here here's one concerning the value of ducks, geese, and cranes in terms of just you know f uh, finance. I mean these are ancient, ancient, ancient formulas for things that we would use in everyday in everyday life. So we've always had mathematics as our side. As far back as we can tell. I mean, how could you build pyramids without a deep understanding of mathematics? And we're just not talking about Egypt here. We're talking about the Aztecs and the Mayans and uh, the pyramids of Southeast Asia. Not only do you have to have a really good understanding of advanced mathematics, but also you have to understand its application of engineering. I mean, these should be, I mean, these monuments that humans have built a very long time ago, I think is grand evidence that we've always had mathematics at our side. It just wasn't developed by one guy. In England. That we, humanity, has been at this for a very long time. And if really, and, and I think this is a really good book that illustrates all of that. I mean, it is this, there's really a chapter in here about the uh, Islamic contributions to mathematics. I mean, it, it, it's just, we typically in the West, especially America, we have one side of the story. You know, the heroes of mathematics is Isaac Newton and Pythagoras. And the heroes, in terms of the time humanity has been around, those two individuals are very, very recent in the time scale of humanity. So a lot of people has contributed greatly to mathematics, the base code of the universe. And I really do think that we have carried mathematics with us ever since we left Africa, probably way before. So anyway, thank you for watching this uh, little rant. Hope you got something out of it. I definitely uh, read the book link is in the description. As long as the along with the other things I've talked about, those links are in the description below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like what I'm doing on the channel, please subscribe. You know, if you want to go over and uh, support me further, hit the Patreon channel, man. It won't hurt you. <laughs> but until until next time, I'll be your lap partner. Take care. Bye bye.